Hello everyone, my name is Jitendra Vafna. In this video, we are going to talk about MuleSoft Intelligent Document Processing. Okay, and this is the part two in Intelligent Document Processing series. Okay, in first part, what we have seen. So, in first part, we discuss about what is Intelligent Document Processing. We have seen how to create a document action in the IDP. Then how we can test a document right and also we have written some of the custom prompt to retrieve the data from the document and also we have a predefined schema we have seen like how the data has get got uh, extracted in the predefined field we have also gone through uh, what is the confidence level and what is the threshold right in this video we are going to see how we can make use of the api to post a document to idp and to retrieve the status of document from the IDP. So we, in last video, we have already published our document exchange, uh, document action into the AnyPoint exchange, right? And that uh, that document action provide me a two endpoint. So one is for like you know, let me go back to exchange. So in exchange, we will find you know, let me go to exchange. So in exchange, like we have published a document action, right? So this is my document action has been published to exchange and here we have a two method one is post and one is get post is as I mentioned it used to upload a invoice to the IDP so IDP can perform uh, data extraction it can try uh, by using AI capabilities and optical character recognition and get method is used to retrieve the status and the data extracted right uh, from the IDP. Okay, let's start. The first thing what we will do. Okay, so let me go to my axis management. Under axis management, you have to go to the connected app. So we have to create a connected app for accessing the API, right? For accessing the API, we re we need a connected app. So I will just say create app. I will say my. I will my idp app that's enough then i can change to client credential i will add the scope and i will just search for document and make sure you are providing this permission otherwise your api will not work and just say next select the proper business group just say next add scope save it once you save it, it will give you a client ID and the client secret. So here my IDP app, copy client ID and paste it somewhere in your notepad. Then copy client secret, paste it, paste it somewhere in your notepad. Next thing, now for accessing any platform APIs, you need to generate a token. Right, for generating the token, this is the standard uh, syntax. So and this is the standard URL, right? This is the standard URL provided by any point platform. What we have to pass a body with a grant type client credential. Now we have to pass a client ID. So I will going to use this client ID which we have generated just now using connected app. Just I will change it. Then next step, I will copy this client secret. I will replace this value. This is some old client ID and client secret. I will replace this. And if you want this data, you can find in one of my blog on the medium where I gave all these commands. So you can just copy paste it from there. And I will also add this link into the description of this video. Okay. So let me go back to my notepad. Copy this command. And I will go to git base or you can run this command on the command prompt also. I will just maximize it. Paste it. Enter. If everything is good, it will generate a token. You can see access token and even you can see you know expire in the 3600 seconds so it will it is valid for one hour let me paste it somewhere yeah now next step i have a document this is the invoice right so i want to post this invoice document to idp so let me do one thing if uh so for that i already have a command c url post content type application json yeah this one sorry authorization right so this is my second command where i am going to post a document to the idp so see url authorization bearer bearer token so where is my bearer token which i have generated right just now i will copy this i will replace this value with a bearer token next thing 
I have to provide a file name, right? So where I can provide my file name? So let me copy one of the file name from here. So I have this particular file. I can just say show more option. And I think it's at the end. I will copy this PNG file name. So this is my PNG file name. And because, because it support multi-part format, right? So I have to give a file path here. So let me check. Mm, put it here, right? I think I have done something wrong here. I think mm, I'll do control Z and let me put it here. I'm just checking whether I put it correctly or not. Okay. And I generate the author. Now I have to provide the URL. So from where I can get the URL, go to any point exchange and just click on this post and copy this URL. And change this. Okay. Oh shit. No, again I have to copy it. I haven't copied it rightly. Copy this. Paste it here. This is my URL. I still have a doubt whether I place this at a right place or not. Uh, I think no. Control X, Control Z. Let me copy this. I think it should be here. Okay. Copy this syntax and just run it here on my Git base. If everything is good so it returned me the execution id back okay so this execution id is important i will go back and we have to use this execution id in the get command now i will use the third syntax which is uh get i want to retrieve the status of my invoice or my document right so i need a bearer token which i already have generated and which is valid for 60 minutes I'm just replacing in your authorization header the next thing I have to get the URL. So I go back, I'll use the get method, I'll copy this URL. Okay, just change this URL. And what, where is your execution ID? So, which I've generated using post, right? I copy this execution ID, just copy this command, right? And go back here, paste it, enter. So I got my JSON response back. Let me check if I have a postman in my, yeah, it's there. So let's keep it here. I will copy this whole JSON message. And I will just, I just using postman to just, you know, to see the JSON message, uh, to see the output. So till JSON message is opening here, you can see the status. So status is manual validation required. So there might be some of the field where the th threshold, uh, where the confidence level is less than threshold or maybe some required field is missing. Okay. So let me use some of the body raw JSON. Control. Okay. I am not able to copy it. Let me copy it again. Okay. I have copied. Beautify it. Sir, here you can see uh, like it requires manual validation. Maybe some of the uh, criteria might be filled. Otherwise, it may be shown as a succeeded. So here you can see all data has been like, you know, extracted. You can see, right? And even it will show the prompts which we have given, I think, right? It should. So we have gave some prompt in first video. What is invoice due date? What is time? Some payment terms and condition. What is invoice detail, right? Now let's go to uh, IDP again. Let me go back to my IDP, Intelligent Document Processing. Under IDP, I will go to my document action. It will list down all. This is my document action. Under go that, you can go to review task. And let's see why uh, the manual validation is required. So it was saying uh, there are two fields, signature found. It's saying like I'm 73.75% sure, right? And for ship to party, just click here, it will highlight it. it. He was thinking like ship to party is not like not 100% sure or not 80% sure. In case if you are okay, you can click on submit and done. Let's try to run the same command again. 
same get status right and let's copy this and let's see what happens now this time it should show as a succeeding see this should show as a succeeding okay so now let me do one thing i have one more invoice i will take this invoice i will take i am just picking the other invoice okay let me go back to my uh, post command so i will just replace this file in my post command copy this i will use the same token because validity is 1 hour i will clear my screen I will paste it, enter. I got a new execution ID, right? Let me copy this. And I will use this execution ID in my get command. Okay, just remove this double quotes. Copy this command. Just go, just clear the screen. Paste it. Let's see what is the output now. So let copy this command. Sorry, that response. Beautify it, and this time it is succeeded because this particular invoice have all the fields which have a threshold greater than eighty, and we like you know what it it matching all the criteria which defined for the document action, and you can see all the fields has been extracted, and it will show the prompts right. So there are some prompts right. So the other two prompts doesn't have a value it that's why it's not showing it right one of the prompts uh, have this particular value i will tell you one more example for same thing right so in like in case uh, what have, uh, i want to show you one more thing right so if you go to review task right so there is a no pending task now what i want to do right i will go back to this demo processing invoice i will edit this right i'll go to prompt so here uh, if you edit the prompt invoice date uh, in this particular C, so this particular invoice was success, but it's showing only one prompt, right? It should throw the error. Why it haven't throw the error? Because it was not required. If I mark this as a required and it is not able to extract that field, it may throw the error. Let's show that. Update. Just I will say publish. I mark this as a required. Let me refresh this. This should be 1.1.0. The new version let it's not published yet or it might be published let me do one thing no not yet taking some time okay refresh it yeah one point it's still not coming it is 1.1.0 latest okay so now what i will do i will go back here and i will just change it to 1.1.0 i will use the same token and in I will use the same invoice which was succeeded at a previous step. Paste this. Enter. Got the execution ID back. Copy this. Change the execution ID here. And also what we need to change? The version. Copy this. I like to clear my screen. Paste it, enter. See, last time it went into succeeded, but this time it it went into manual validation. Right, beautify it. Because why? Because we have marked one of our prompt which is equal to required. Right, we have marked this prompt like right, invoice date, which is equal to required. That is one of the reason it went under the manual validity. I can go to review task. It's saying not found. You can enter it manually, right? So I can enter it manually. For example, 2024 or even you can just say submit and done. If you don't want to man enter it and I can just say 10. Submit and done. Okay. So I've just entered it manually. Let me run the same command again. Let's copy. go back here paste it let's see now you can see the due date correct and you will see the status equal to succeed date right so you can see the you can enter the manual in case it undergoes the manual validation right 
I so that is what I want to show you. I have tried to cover everything in this particular demo. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please click on like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.